In this short talk, I would like to summarize the key findings of the recent report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. I have the privilege to be the Vice Chair of Working Group 3, which is the Working Group of Mitigation in, within the IPCC, beyond being a professor at the Department of Environmental Sciences and Policy in the Central European University. The IPCC is the climate science body of the United Nations. It shared the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize with former US Vice President Al Gore. Its main task is to assess this very complex body of science on climate change in a way that decision makers can already act and our results have been widely used by uh, international processes such as the processes under the UNFCCC. So what I want to do is highlight some of the key findings that are most relevant for the upcoming conference of the parties in Sharm el Sheikh. As you can see in this slide, our reports are the result of major scientific efforts. For example, the Working Group 3 report has been worked on for years by close to 300 authors. It summarized more than 18,000 scientific papers and has been improved by close to 60,000 reviewers' comments. The Working Group 1 report, which was on the science of climate change, concluded that climate change is no longer the problem of our grandchildren. In fact, we are already experiencing climate change. Recent changes in the climate are widespread, rapid, intensifying and unprecedented in thousands of years. In fact, if we look at the concrete numbers, global average temperature has not been so high for at least 125,000 years. Global carbon dioxide concentrations, which is the key gas responsible for climate change, and also ocean surface acidity have not been so high for two million years. There are already irreversible changes in our climate system. And we go, if we go on with emissions, further changes are possible, which will not be possible to reverse within the human timescales. At risk is, for example, the Greenland ice sheet, the West Antarctic ice sheet, the collapse of some of our ocean current systems, including the one that runs the Gulf Stream. Forests die back in a widespread manner, for example, die back of the Amazon forest. Also, we hear a lot about the Siberian permafrost gas class rates, so methane emissions that could accelerate as a result of climate change and could cause a positive feedback process. Nevertheless, the important news is that many of the changes can still be slowed and others can still be stopped by limiting warming. What the next figure shows is that it really is a big difference where we go on with emissions and where we go with the temperatures. Unfortunately, it is unlikely anymore that we can avoid reaching one and a half degree warming as compared to pre-industrial level. You know that one and a half degree is the goal of the Paris Agreement, which calls for limiting global warming well under two degrees, ideally to one and a half degrees. But what our results show is that we could still potentially limit the change roughly to this temperature, roughly to this warming level. However, if we continue business as usual, then we may reach as, far, as much as 5 degrees centigrade more warming. Now you might think, who cares for 1.5 degrees or even 5 degrees? We don't necessarily such big change in such fairly low number of degrees in our weather, for example. But what the next figure shows is that this does make a very significant difference in many systems on the planet. What you see on the left side is the same figure as I showed before, our climate, possible climate futures until the end of this century. And what you so see on the right hand side are the level of impact in selected number of systems. This is the so-called burning embers diagram, the most famous diagram perhaps, or among the most famous diagrams of the IPCC, which helped us select and pick the ideal temperature targets. 
for example, uh, for uh, the Paris Agreement. What you see here is that already at one and a half degrees, we will experience high impact in several systems. And at two degrees, we enter into the purple areas in several systems, which means in purple areas, it may not be possible anymore to adapt to the changes. And certainly, if we, if we go as high as four degrees or you know, potentially five degrees, almost every system will be impacted so much that even adaptation will be very difficult. What the Working Group 3 report concludes about the feasibility in one and a half degrees, which is clearly a very important question, exciting everyone still, is that unless there are immediate and deep reductions across all sectors, one and a half degrees is beyond reach. What the sex assessment report also shows is that limiting human-induced global warming to any temperature level requires reaching at least net zero carbon dioxide emissions. That means even if we surpass the one and a half degrees, even if we surpass the two degrees, if we want to stabilize the climate at any degrees, reaching net zero CO2 emissions is non-negotiable. The conclusion of that is that the sooner we reach that limit, the lower the temperature we can stabilize the Earth's climate at. Now the good news is that the Working Rule 3 report, our report shows that we can do this. In fact, there are many ways for us to reach this target. For example, there are options available now in every sector that can at least halve emissions by 2030. And what this figure illustrates, that demand and services is crucial to reaching uh, net zero goals. It is the first time that the IPCC has worked on and has focused on demand and services. What this means is, for example, when we ask the question, where will my next kilowatt hour CO2 emission free kilowatt hour of energy come from? Before that, we should ask ourselves, do we really need that next kilowatt hour to reach the same services or to supply even better services? Do I really need to do that transport? Do I really need to move somewhere else? to reach the same thing that I want, for example, to work or to get certain service. Maybe we, I can reach it without actually going around. Do I really need the next ton of steel, which I would otherwise need to reduce its carbon emissions for? Perhaps I can have the same building or the same city, same infrastructure without uh, the concrete or uh, the steel. So yes, demand and services Thinking about these can have a very important influence in being able to reach net zero goals. Another important good message from the recent report is that technology has advanced very significantly, which can help us reach our net zero goals. There are several technologies whose costs have declined very much just since the turn of the century and are now fully competitive with fossil fuels. For example, photovoltaic power, onshore wind power, as well as batteries for electric uh, vehicles. However, clearly investments have to be scaled up significantly to let these technologies permeate and these mitigation options permeate the entire world and all of our cities and all of uh, our countries. Yes, we do need that investments are scaled up but, uh, by at least three to six fold. The good news is that reaching our climate related goals can have very positive impacts on development goals as well if we do them the right way. For example, what this particular figure illustrates is that in one particular area, mitigation options in urban areas, most of the options can have very positive impacts on sustainable development goals. And indeed, we cannot reach our climate goals without advancing also sustainable development goals. And indeed, reaching climate change related goals is essential for reaching our sustainable development goals. But it's true, the reverse is also true. We cannot reach the climate goals without reaching also the sustainable development goals. So in summary, the evidence is clear 
we have the technologies, we have the mitigation options, we have the total amount of the finance flows. The time for action is now. The next decade will be critical. If you would like to find out more about the IPCC's sixth assessment report, please visit the IPCC's website. You can also follow IPCC on various social media channels and you're also welcome to follow me on Twitter. Thank you for your attention.